Hi, I'm Niall Heaney. Uh, after much debate, deliberation and conversation that my wife is pretty much fed up with now, I have uh, eventually decided to sell my Porsche 911. This here is a 2005 997 Carrera 2S with the factory aero cup kit or GT3 body kit. So it's got the front wing, front spoiler, it's got the rear wing on it. Um, it's cobalt blue. It has a pretty nice spec as far as I'm concerned. It, it has a six speed manual gearbox. It has the Porsche switchable exhaust on it, factory exhaust. It has uh, the sunroof option. It's got navy blue interior. It's just a fantastic car. It really is my, my pride and joy. Um, it's with a bit of a heavy heart that I'm selling it, but I have decided to advertise it and see if I can find a new home for it. I'm going to take a walk around the car to show you exactly the condition it's in. I'll tell you a bit more about it. I'll start the engine up, I'll let you listen to the exhaust, to switch it, I'll switch it over and stuff like that. and just try and give you a better idea what this car can do, what shape it's in, and hopefully it'll help you make up your mind whether you might be interested enough to come and have a look at it. I bought this car in February 2015, so it's coming up, just coming up on three years ago. Um, I bought it with 66 or 67,000 miles on the clock. It currently has 86,000 miles on it. it. Touch wood hasn't missed a beat for me. It's been super reliable, great fun to own, great fun to drive. Um, the bodywork, one of the things I really liked about it when I bought it was the fact that the bodywork was as straight as a, as a die. Super nice condition, no dents, no chips or anything in it. The only thing I have had to do, which if you're going to buy one of these cars with an aero kit and you're going to use it as a bit like an everyday car, you're going to drive it around the, around the streets, this bumper, you are going to catch it on speed bumps and stuff. This lower lip is super low to the ground. Um, so I have had to paint this, I think twice. Um, and I know from checking back through the service records it was painted in the past as well. If you're going to buy something like this, you just have to budget for painting the front bumper once a year. That's, that's the way I looked at it. But other than that, the rest of the bodywork is completely straight as die. Taking a walk down along the passenger side here. It's the cobalt blue paint as well, which is stunning. It really does stand out from the crowd. You know, this thing turns a lot of heads whenever you're out and about in it. Whenever I was looking to buy one, I had decided I was only going to get uh, either cobalt blue or guards red. Uh, and after I bought it, I was really glad I went for the blue. Actually, I think it's more classy looking, a little bit, a little bit more exclusive than the red as well. Coming right the way down to the back wing, wings perfect, back bumpers perfect. Spoiler across the back end. It's in beautiful condition as well. I've just spent a few hundred pounds on having a full professional valid from detail of the car so we give it a, like a mop we did like a three stage process with wax treatments and stuff like that and it looks fantastic at the minute taking a look down along the driver's side then again it's in beautiful condition there's no scrapes no scratches paintwork looks lovely there's no corrosion or anything everything's working exactly as it should i mean i am i'm pretty fussy about most of my stuff um i sell boats for a living and we're sort of like they have to be perfect to the buyers, the way the, bear, the buyers expect stuff, and I'm pretty fussy about all my stuff. But the, the Porsche in particular, nobody gets near. Nobody else is allowed to drive it. Um, whenever I'm going to the like supermarket car parks and stuff, I park the furthest away I could possibly get, <laughs> try and avoid people parking behind me. Um, and luckily, Touchwood, I've had nobody has you know, there's nobody has swung a door in there or anything. It's in really, really nice order the whole way around. The car is fitted from the factory with the Porsche multi-spoke. 19 inch alloys um, and they have uh, Michelin Pilot Super Sport tyres on the whole way around. So they're 235 35 ZR19s on the front and they're 295 30 ZR19s on the rear. The wheels themselves are in perfect condition. They, I think they really look smart with the, with the aero kit. Uh, it, it really was. I looked for, before I bought this car, I looked for close to two years to find the right one because I've like I said, I'm really picky and I wanted just the right colour, the right spec, I wanted the Porsche exhaust, I wanted the aero cup kit and I really wanted these wheels as well so I was delighted to get the one with the cup kit and these alloys. Um, so the alloys are in great condition, no curb damage on any of them. She's got the Porsche red factory brake calipers on there as well. The tyres are in pretty good, well they're in good condition, there's, there's plenty of wear left in them. The, the two rear tyres are like brand new, the fronts are a little bit older, they're probably Maybe they've got maybe five or six thousand miles, maybe a bit more left in them, but they're going to need replaced before the, the rears. Whenever I 
bought the car, um, I bought it from a company called Lewis James in Huddersfield, I think it is, up in the North England, and uh, I got like six months warranty or something with it. I I'm pretty sure they had they sprayed these wheels. They didn't tell me they did, but I think, and if it, it was a super, it was a top quality job because. I couldn't really tell by looking at it, but there's just a couple of wee minor, wee tiny spots on some of the side spokes where you're starting to see a wee tiny wee bit of bubbling on them. It's still nowhere near bad enough that I'd be wanting to get it done or anything, but just something to bear in mind for the future. Whenever I bought it, they were perfect. Just a couple of wee minor blemishes now. But this rear uh, passenger side rear wheel, again, perfect, no care damage, tires like brand new. Driver side rear wheel, again, is in beautiful condition. Um, this tire, again, like brand new, it's obviously matching tires the whole way around. I, I wouldn't mess around with putting on different brand tires or anything like that, or different pattern. Same tread pattern the whole way around the car. The wheel's in perfect condition. The only thing here is I've lost a little dust cap off the the uh, the valve. It's a bit annoying. <laughs> only noticed it there this week. But other than that, that's in great condition. Finally, the driver's side front wheel, again, great shape, no curb damage and the tires but about the same sort of wear as the other front tire probably five or six thousand miles maybe a little bit more left in it taking a look at the back end of the car um, she obviously has the Porsche factory switchable exhaust system that I mentioned before and the telltale the giveaway for that is these um, different sized exhaust tubes so the, the outside uh, tailpipe is slightly larger diameter than the inner one on both sides so that's, that's the telltale that you can tell she's got the switchable exhaust from just by looking at her um, She's got the chrome tips on it. She's obviously, this is all the factory um, aero cup kit, the, the, the rear fixed rear wing. It really does look the part. I really like, look, you know, I think that the shape of these cars from the, from the rear like this is, is stunning. Um, she's got the little inset uh, high level brake light there set on the top of the, uh, the wing. She's got these cooling uh, vents on her as well. They look a bit more aggressive than the, than the standard uh, bonnet or boot lid. Um, the rear bumper and stuff, I've never had to do any paint work or any body work back here. This is all original, beautiful condition. Um, one other thing, one quick thing I want to point out is this, this number plate is my own personal plate and it's not for sale with the car. I'm going to be keeping the number plate, um, just so you know. Um, the original plate was, I think, GX55. So she was a 55 reg, like CZS or something. So um, with all the records there for, for, for it uh, throughout the uh, ownership of her. One other quick thing I want to point out is she has the rear window wiper option as well. That, that wasn't standard on these cars in the factory. And she's obviously got the factory sunroof, which will open up in a minute. The car has been MOT'd until, I think the MOT is due on the 8th of March, 2018. She sailed through the last MOT. Um, the guy was actually really complimentary about her. So the doors and stuff are all perfect. All the, like, you know, the hinges and clips and all that sort of stuff is working perfect. The little uh, drop mechanism on the windows is working perfect so whenever you open the thing it drops it down so you can open the window everything all that stuff's all working perfect and then as, as I said she has that uh, dark navy blue uh, leather interior to complement the cobalt blue paintwork the passenger seat is like brand new um, no wear on the leading edge of the seat a um, couple of wee minor scuff marks on the Carrera S uh, door plates but um, other than that it's, uh, it's in beautiful condition the car was debadged before I bought it, so usually you would have the Carrera S badge on here, but it was taken off and I didn't bother putting it back on again. So just in case you're wondering why it's debadged, I don't know, I didn't do it, but I decided to leave it off. Driver's door again in beautiful condition. Driver's kick plate is actually maybe a little bit better than the, the passenger side one. It's in beautiful condition as well. And even the driver's seat, you know, there's minimal wear on this thing. Uh, you know, there's no exposed stitching or anything. It's, it's, uh, it really does look the part. The only thing that there's really any wear on in the interior is this driver's floor mat. Um, just with your heel here, it has sort of worn through a bit of the carpet. It's, there's not, it's not actually completely through, but it's just worn that out a bit. But a set of mats wouldn't cost that much if you wanted to make it like pristine again. I'll just key it up here and sort of talk you through the main uh, features and stuff on the, in the interior. Um, so, this car, it obviously is the Porsche, the original uh, Porsche entertainment system. Um, it has all the usual functions, your stereo, uh, AM, FM and stuff. Uh, Porsche wouldn't be, it doesn't have the Bluetooth telephone kit and it doesn't have the navigation system. Now, I wasn't particularly bothered, it does obviously have the trip computer and stuff like that. I wasn't especially bothered about that because this, 
if you read if you read online and stuff and research these things, these uh, they're really old technology. Porsche are more focused seemingly on driving dynamics and performance and stuff than they are on in car entertainment. And this even even whenever it was brand new, this car, this this system was really not that anything particularly special. Um, but it is what it is. It hasn't been messed around with. I, I toyed with the idea of changing it out for a more modern system, but apparently that can devalue the cars, and I really didn't want to do that. So I just left it exactly as is. It's a front-loading CD player. CD player and stuff works in it, um, and uh, it's uh, it is what it is. The stereo and stuff. It's actually a pretty good stereo, and this one has had the the Bose stereo upgrade as well. So. Um, the sound system's pretty good, so if you're playing CDs and stuff, it, it does have it has, uh, good speakers on it. Like this was a maybe a couple thousand pound upgrade whenever the car was new. Um, so um, the car currently has eighty six thousand five hundred and twenty six miles on the clock. There's um, no water lights in the dash, um, so obviously got that automatic oil measuring thing. It has the tire pressure monitoring system here, so it's uh, electronically monitors your tire pressures. Um, which is all in good uh, working order. Uh, obviously it links, this is another reason why I didn't want to change the stereo is because the stereo is linked through to the display on the on the taco so you can hear what, you know, see what track you're listening to or what radio station you're listening to. Gives you your fuel, fuel consumption, fuel range, all that sort of stuff. This car also has cruise control on it as well. Um, and uh, yeah, it's all, it's all um, working perfectly. Um, down here we've got seat heaters on this one, passenger and driver heated seats. Um, obviously your windscreen control function, recirc, eco mode if you're not running on air conditioning. Uh, you turn off the eco brings on proper air con. You've got rear screen demister. Um, we've got temperature controls over here on the left, fan controls on the right, um, heating uh, air directional controls here. These buttons, whenever I bought the, the car, these were wore off a wee bit. So we've sort of I've touched these up with a bit of black paint, or you know, just to sort of fill it in a bit. But these are these are slightly worn. These are obviously the two switches that see the most action. They're very slightly worn. Um, other than that, everything else is perfect. This switch here for raising and lowering the spoiler is obviously redundant on this car. It's only on the the standard cars where they have the, the ordinary boot. So this one's redundant. She does have the the PASM, the the Porsche assisted stability management I think it is or so basically you can stiffen the car up so if you hit this switch the shocks go into full stiffness mode um, and you turn it hit it again and they uh, they go back to standard standard uh, spring rates and then this switch here is the, uh, it's the it's the important one for me it's the the Porsche um, switchable exhaust so factory exhaust so if you, you hit the switch um, to open the exhaust makes the makes the car louder um, and it just looks apart. Now it, it switches off. It closes automatically. I think if you're if you're going below 50 miles an hour and the engine RPM is higher than 3,000 RPM, it automatically closes the exhaust. So it's like for noise regulations and stuff. Um, but if you're below 3,000 RPM or over 50, the exhaust open sounds so much better. It's not even funny. Um, I really did. I was wondering whether you know I should really be that bothered about it because it was really hard to find a manual car in the right colour I wanted with the switchable exhaust. Those were the three main things. Plus it had to be a 2S as well. It wasn't going to entertain a standard Carrera. Um, I was I was beginning to lose heart. I was going to go buy one without the switchable exhaust, but then I heard it in real life and uh, decided, no, it absolutely has got to be the switchable exhaust. It makes a world of difference the sound of this thing. So, um, But I'll fire it up in a wee while and show you, show you how it sounds. And then over here we've got the PSM off button. So that's your poor stability management, the traction control. So you can switch that off as well. Not that I've, I've ever really done that. Um, Six-speed manual gearbox, as I said, again, um, wasn't. I just wasn't that impressed with the reviews I was reading about the um, about the Tiptronic gearbox in these early 997s. So I and I much prefer the feel of driving a manual gearbox car. So um, the gearbox is in great condition. Uh, the whole car drives like brand new. It's as, it's as tight as a drum. Um, in spite of the mileage, um, I researched the life out of these things before I bought them. I'll tell you a bit more about it in a minute, but. Like this thing has full service history. It had everything done whenever you wanted it to have, to have it done. Like clutches were replaced, brake fluids, um, there's upgraded engine mounts put in it, stuff that you know it's it's, it's had the works it drives 
fantastically well. If you didn't see the, the mileage on the odometer, you'd swear you were driving a car with like 40,000 on it. My father actually has uh, a 2005 911 Carrera 2S. Now it's a standard one, doesn't have the aero kit, doesn't have the sports exhaust, doesn't have all the little extras I wanted, um, but it has 40,000 miles on it. And there's I can there's no discernible difference in how those how these two cars drive. You know this one this one is every bit as good, if not better, than his. Um, and it's it's driving a a, a, a dream. Condition wise, the interior is lovely. All the leather is lovely. That on the the dash and stuff they got there. A couple of minor marks and stuff up around the the uh, sw window switches here, and obviously these two wee switches on the climate control. But other than that, everything else is really good. The windscreen controls are up here on the roof. Beside the courtesy lights, all the little lights and stuff are all working exactly as they should. Um, you can open the vent only, which is how I would tend to run it, just with a vent open. Or if you want, you can uh, open the whole thing. The runner is working perfectly, the mechanism is working perfectly, there's no leaks out of it at all. Um, and again, this is a, a fairly unusual option on these uh, 911s, there's not too many you see with the, with the sunroof. One of the big reasons I decided to go for a 911 is because I've got two small kids. I do the school run in the morning, and although I wanted like a, I wanted like a sort of usable supercar, if you like, um, and there's very few that have four seats, proper four seats. And my kids are small; they're only uh, six and nine, um, so they fit perfectly into the back end of this thing. Um, and it is, uh, people think they're a waste of space, but they actually are pretty usable. So, take a look in here at the back seats. Obviously, I've sort of ferried the kids to and from school, not every day, by any stretch of the imagination, but um, they are they have it completely drilled into them. They're not allowed any, there's no food comes in here, there's no drinks, there's, <laughs> there's no nothing. They, they're inspected before they're put in as well, so they're, they're not dirty. So um, this, the back seats are like brand new. I'm pretty sure I was the first person in this car to use the back seats because they were, they were literally like new whenever I got them. But all of my kids sitting in here, they haven't done. They haven't seen much action. The seats are in great condition. You can fold them down as well. So if you're if you're going away for the weekend, you want a bit more room for an overnight bag or a suitcase, you can fold these down, and you've got that whole rear parcel shelf for uh, for storing gear. You see, you've got these little extra Bose speakers. That's part of the speaker upgrade behind these rear seats as well. All the mechanisms and stuff are working perfectly. And uh, yeah, as I said, if if you're looking for you know a supercar that you can have some real driving pleasure out of, but also, you know, has the practicality that if you're picking up the kids, you can take them with you, then for me, the 911 is really the only option. Like, there's, there's hardly anything else out there that does it. Certainly nothing with the pedigree and the performance and the looks of a 911. I'll pull the bonnet now and we'll take a look um, at the engine. So, all obviously everything's working. The engine and release catch, all the struts and stuff are perfect. You get the cooling fan mounted into the mounted into the boot, which is also integrates the the whole fixed spoiler there. She's obviously the, the 3.8 model, so she's the higher horsepower one. She's the Carrera 2S, rear wheel drive, 3.8 liter, um, makes 355 horsepower. I think it is. Does not need 60 and around about five seconds. Absolutely amazing bit of kit to drive. Performance is fantastic. Handling's amazing. I mean, I, I've, I have owned and, and do own currently a couple of other high performance cars. Like I've had a Mercedes E55, currently have a Jeep SRT, a 2015 one. That's, that's a 6.4 litre, 300 and, or 400 something horsepower, 4, 425 or 475, I think. And there's nothing holds a candle with a Porsche in terms of like drivability, handling, um, and involvement in the drive. Um, it really is a great going car. Uh, if you haven't driven one, you know, you really highly recommend it. Now, I researched the life out of these cars before I bought them, and if you've done any research yourself, you'll maybe have heard stories about the 997, the early 997 motors, potentially giving trouble. Some of them suffered from scored bores and different bits and pieces like that. So I was concerned about that whenever I was searching for a car. One of the things that attracted me to this car is that it actually had a brand new Porsche engine installed by a Porsche Center whenever it had 40, 44,000 miles on it or something. So this engine, and whenever they replaced those engines, they got the newer ones, the upgraded ones were put into them whenever they were doing any warranty replacements. So this one 
had a warranty replacement Porsche engine at 44,000 miles. So the engine is only actually done 40, 40 some thousand miles, or probably about 40,000 miles, uh, maybe a slightly less. And because it's that operated one, you can be virtually guaranteed it's not going to have those early issues that the early ones had. Now, to be doubly sure, I actually had the Porsche, this car, independently inspected whenever I bought it in February 14. So um, I got, or February 15, sorry. So I got Hartec, who are a well known Porsche specialist based up in the north east of England, northwest, sorry. I got those guys to inspect the car. So Lewis James, who I bought the car off, were kind enough to run it over to Hartec for me. And they spent the day, they went through it, they did their full pre purchase inspection. And I also paid extra to have them put a boroscope down the, down the uh, cylinder bores. They pulled out the spark plugs, put the boroscope down every cylinder to visually inspect it for any scoring on the bores, and it came back completely clear. Hardtech actually said to me at the time they would be happy to put it on their maintenance program. Um, and give, you know, so they, they only take, they inspect every car, they do like a, a standard maintenance program where you pay so much every month and they'll look after it and they'll sort of guarantee there's no major issues with it. So Hardtech were happy enough to put it on to their, um, their maintenance program. And that, along with the inspection that they did, plus the replacement engine by Porsche at you know 40 odd thousand miles, was, was sort of good enough for me. I, I knew I was buying a good one, and thankfully that, that has proved to be the case. It, it literally hasn't given me a, a moment's trouble, other than uh, routine service. And I think I had to change two wish, uh, there's like a stabilizing anti roll bar at the front, that's what it is. Anti roll bar at the front, I had to change two bushes in it because there's a wee bit of a rattle from it. Other than that, I, I, I haven't had touch wood, I haven't had to do anything to the car. So if you take a look in around the engine bay here, you can see that it, um, it's in beautiful condition. You know, it looks the part, everything's nice and clean and tidy and dry. I got it detailed as part of the valve that was done as well. Um, and it doesn't, even, it doesn't even burn that much oil. These cars you do, you ha obviously have that electronic oil measuring function on the, on the dash. And they use a bit of oil, they, you know, they use a bit of mobile one. And you have to top them up every so often, but this car, I haven't really, I, like, I'm used to that because I had it, you know, my father's had to do it and usually asked me to do it for him. Um, but this one hasn't, hasn't required much topping up at all. Um, so it's a really good engine, burning very little oil. The exhaust tips are always nice and clean and tidy too. That's another telltale sign. If you've got really smoky or black exhaust tips, it's usually a sign that the thing's burning a bit too much oil. It can be an indication that some of the bores are scored. This one has never done anything like that. So it's a really straight car, been well looked after. It has a full service and stuff there with it as well. On the subject of service history, I'll just show you the book now as well, so you can see the, the stamps and also there's a full history file with it too. So obviously the original book has the wee, you know, the wee card, uh, release card for releasing the, the lights, changing lights and stuff. It's all here, you know, everything's here. The, the navigation system manual, the owner's handbook. Um, and the book has been stamped. Let me just, yeah, here we go. It's, it's been serviced only by either Porsche Centres, Mid Sussex, I think delivered the car they start off with, or independent Porsche specialists. So um, that's your brake fluid change actually. Um, so you've got those, the service stamps up as far as um, April 2016, year after I bought the car, and it's 77,800 miles. So I think it has a 20,000 mile service interval on these things. Um, I decided to do it at 10,000. It's probably worth keeping it to around about the 10,000. But I mean, it's only at 86,000 now. So, you know, it's pr probably only really due a service in the next few months. So, and I had it done by George McMullen, who'd be the, the leading independent Porsche specialist in this part of the world. So that's the service book. And then here's the history file. So. This is all the, the service receipts and paperwork I got with it. That's the paperwork pack from Lewis James, the, the dealer I bought it from in 2015. Um, and a bunch of paperwork here. I'll just show you a few of the, the sort of main ones. This is obviously a list from the previous uh, owner who had it before Lewis James got their hand on it. And, and he ran through, he, he conveniently listed out everything it had done. So December 2012 was whenever it had the engine replaced by Porsche at 45,600 miles. It also had the cruise control fitted then as well. There wasn't actually cruise control on the car from new, so that uh, independent that Porsche garage who installed the engine also installed the cruise control. Um, brake fluid was done on February 13. MOT was passed. Oil and filter change at 53,000. Air and pollen filters 59,000. Laser wheel alignment. Uh, AC radiator replaced. The, the tire pressure monitors were replaced. They can give trouble, so they were replaced in May 14. 
It had 200 cell exhaust cats installed as well back then, May 14, um, past the MOT. It had the clutch, this is another big thing on these cars. The clutches need replaced um, around about every 50,000 miles or something, I think. So it had the clutch replaced in August 14. Um, I had a new key. I have two keys for the car as well. Um, with it, I bought it with two keys. So we have all the previous MOT certificates here for it. Um, that's the uh, Porsche Center Colchester with the guys that did the engine. So that's the, the, the work for the engine that was done. A um, whole bunch of stuff in here. I have an invoice in there from Hartec. The only thing Hartec discovered whenever I got the car inspected was that the brake fluid was due changed. So I actually got Hartec to replace the, the brake fluid February 15 um, as, as part of the, after they did the inspection for me. So there's a whole bunch of paperwork there uh, with the car. And I mean, it's always great to have stuff like that. And it also shows you that, um, you know, the guy was, was properly looking after the, the car. Um, he made a note down here, you know, the previous owners. This guy here made a note there. They had, I think he had warranty until November 2014. So that's obviously after he replaced the, uh, the engine. They obviously give you like two years factory warranty or something with it. So um, that's all going with the car, the paperwork file, plus the book and the two keys. It's all there. I'll pop the bonnet down as well and show you in the, uh, in the boot. So obviously the engine's at the back, so your luggage compartment's up front. Um, again, it's in, it's in immaculate condition. Everything is here as well. You get your warning triangle. If I fold this down, uh, you can see that she has the the tire. It's like a little air compressor, emergency tire repair kit. It has that's. I think that's something to do with the the, the tire kit. I never use this stuff. Um, Tow and I uh, lock and wheel nut is in here. Key for that. Um, so everything's there that should be there um, and up in here is also where your spare oil lives so I, I just wrapped that and I think I had an oil thing leak at one point but that's the little Porsche pouch it's all cleaned up now but that's the Porsche pouch for your little uh, can of mobile one I actually use a five liter can I'm happy to give you that with the car whenever it goes um, they're about 40 quid a drum but as I said that they've seen it I've only ever I think whenever I've bought two actually in the, in the three years I've owned it, and then underneath here is a battery. I'll just show you quickly because I did replace the battery. Um, it was getting a wee bit weak um, around about six months or so ago, maybe a bit more. But it was this. It was 2017. It had a brand new battery from Halfords with a, I think it has a four-year warranty, and I've put the receipt for that into the the paperwork file as well. So if you if you've any trouble with the battery. In the next three years, you take it to Halfords and they'll, they'll replace it for you. So you can see that everything in here is in good condition as well. The luggage compartment is obviously perfect. The, the carpeting in there is perfect. All the plastic trim around it is all great. The underside of the bonnet is good. Sometimes in these cars, I've even seen people where you know, they've put too much stuff in here and they've, they've ended up with a wee dent or something in the bonnet from trying to shove it down. But this one's all perfect. Um, and you just push down on the on the bags to close it so that's all in, in really good condition as well hopefully it's apparent that um, this is my pride and joy I absolutely love this car the best car I've had but hands down the best car I've ever had um, I really I've been trying to decide whether to sell this car or not for at least the last six months and um, it's just getting to the point where I'm really not driving it very much and um, I don't want to see it sort of start to degrade by lack of care and attention. Not that it hasn't had care and attention, it's obviously it's kept in here. I, I sell boats for a living, this is the showroom, the car lives in the showroom. It's always kept clean and tidy, I rarely take it out in, in bad weather. Um, I don't like driving it at this time of year with the salt on the roads and stuff like that anyway, so it tends to live in here over the winter. But I've just decided it's probably not a bad time to, to try and find a new home for it. Having said that, I'm really not that fussed if it doesn't sell. I genuinely love the car. I'm not taking a bad price for it because I know what I've spent on it and I know what I've invested into it as well to keep it tip top. One of the things about these 997s as well, they are an iconic 
looking car. They're streets ahead of the 996 in terms of the, the looks and the style. And even compared to the more modern ones, they, they still hold their own. Like whenever, I, whenever I'm driving around this car, people are always stopping and talking to you about it. You get loads of looks, turns loads of heads. I've had kids come up to me to, to get their photograph taken, standing beside it and stuff. You know, it's it, genuinely, and whenever people, you know, people just don't think it's a 30 grand car. People think it's like a 60 or 70 grand car. You know, they, they, um, it looks a hell of a lot more than it is. And since I bought this one, they really haven't, dropped in value that much um like i particularly if you get a, a, a one like this that's different like my father's car is a silver standard porsche with no body kit and they are starting to become more common around this part of the world anyway and, and they're not that striking but this one with the aero kit with a big wing on the back of it with a cobalt blue color scheme it stands out from the crowd it looks different and these cars are always going to hold their money um, i think this could be a genuinely good quality investment. This car, you know, you're not going to lose any money on it. If you look after it um, and keep it tip top, you're always going to get the, the investment back out of it again. I'll start the car up now, briefly, so you can hear it start to run, and I'll also switch the exhaust open. So the exhaust is closed, the default's the close. So I'll start it up closed first, and then I'll open it. You'll hear it gets louder, it gets sort of deeper, like a raspier note. Here we go. demonstrates the difference. It really is a big difference now. It gets a lot deeper, a lot throatier sounding. Um, it's it's uh, dark now and the weather's not that great, but if we get time tomorrow in the morning, I'll take the car out of spin on the road and you can sort of, you know, get a little bit of water uh, road test footage, sorry, and, uh, you know, uh, you'll hear what the exhaust sounds like on the open road. I'll just quickly sort of, I want to demonstrate to you that there's no uh, codes or anything or uh, warning lights in the dash so you have to put your foot fully in the clutch this is the oil measuring thing that it, it, uh, it's saying it's going to take almost half an hour because the, the car's just been run but whenever the car's been left standing for half an hour or so it goes back to zero it just takes a few seconds so foot in the clutch in neutral turn the key uh, just come out of that seat belt warning so you see there's no no warning lights or anything on the dash but working perfect oil pressure is really good if you can see it there making like a five bar pressure at idle and then the little exhaust switch is there that's the exhaust open and you hear it getting a wee bit deeper so the, everything's working perfectly there's literally no fault to the car it's driving a dream um, and uh, you can check out the road test footage now. So I'll take the car, a quick drive here so you can sort of see how it's going, um, but it is, uh, it's driving a dream. The car's pulling really cleanly through the gears, um, engine sounds good, oil pressure and stuff is all good, temperature is always sitting at 80 degrees um, bang in the middle of the gauge brakes are good suspension is good everything about it is uh is a1 it's tracking in a straight line as well whenever you let go of the steering wheel it doesn't pull to either side and whenever you 
open it up, it sounds fantastic. It's just really great fun to drive this thing. She's braking well, she pull, she's not pulling to either side, even under heavy braking. Um, I, I've never tracked this car, I've never had it to attract here or anything, as far as I'm aware, I don't think any of the previous owners have either, so, I mean, it hasn't been abused, I'm not, I don't drive, I'm not, you know, I don't drive, like, uh, <laughs> like an old age pints or anything, I, I do like a bit of speed, but at the same time, I have lots of mechanical sympathy, I mean, I, I don't want to be paying to, <laughs> to fix anything that I've, that I've caused, so, I never, would never over rev the car, um, I think I hit the limiter once because I missed the gear shift and it really did annoy me so I, like, I don't bring it up in the limiter uh, before, before I shift gear. Apparently from the research I've done, these cars, um, they don't really like to be, apparently one of the problems, they're one of the reasons that, um, one of the things that can cause problems with the engines or if you do like a full throttle acceleration from low RPM, so it's a quite a revvy engine, it revs out at like 7000 RPM. Um, and the torque and stuff really doesn't kick in to over 3,000 RPM. So one of the things I'm pretty always conscious of is, you know, if I'm, if I'm cruising along at, at 2,000 RPM or whatever, I would never just nail the throttle. I would never just floor it because um, you can tell that the engine doesn't like to pull from those low RPMs, and apparently that can sort of prematurely wear it as well. So I always wait to, you know, I would never go full throttle acceleration at anything less than about 4,000 RPM. Um, just because that's where the engine's happiest, you know, you've got your oil pressure up, and um, you know that's that's the way it's sort of designed to be driven. So um, you know, if you're just cruising along, a couple thousand RPMs, perfect, sticking in the sixth gear, um, and it'll, it's really easy on fuel as well. Actually, if you take it on a longer run, I quite regularly will get 27, 28 miles the gallon out of it on a longer run. If you really nurse it, you could even squeeze 30 out of it. Um, but uh, around the town and things, you're probably getting about maybe 20, 21, things like that. But I don't drive it around the town very often. Um, I sort of use the car, I use it at the weekends, or if I have somewhere to go, if I have an appointment, something to go meet, um, I'll usually take it with me on the, on longer runs. So, But it's driving great engines. I mean, I sort of know a little bit how these cars are supposed to perform because my father's had one. He had his from brand new. It's the exact same car. He still has it. Um, so I know how they're supposed to drive, I know what they're supposed to do and this, like I said, this one drives every bit as good as, uh, as my father's car and because it's got that sports exhaust, we've got the exhaust open at the minute it just sounds fantastic, you know, under acceleration they're a really, really nice driving, nice running car difficult to decide whether to sell this car or not. It's just, it goes, it's just a great going car. Sounds class, looks class. Everything about this car is just super cool as far as I'm concerned. So there you go, that's my um, Porsche 911 Carrera 2S. 
If you're interested in the car, if you've any questions about it, or if you want Irene to come and see it, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Just give me a call or drop me an email, um, and I'll happily talk to you about the car. And you know, you're more than welcome to come and have it inspected, check it out, whatever you want to do. Thanks very much for taking the time to watch the video.